Welcome back. We're now going to chat with the rising star of English football, Ollie Watkins. It's over to Sabi Guerrero at the Brentford training ground as she catches up with the sought after player. Thanks, Ty and Lexi. Yes, we're here at Brentford's training ground to talk to a player many likened to Arsenal legend Thierry Henry. So let's find out a little bit more about one of football's most sought after players. I'm Ollie Watkins and I'm an attacker for Brentford. I feel like it's part and parcel of the game really, um, at a good club like Brentford where there's a lot of young players, there's going to be interest, there's going to be teams you know, sniffing around and you see headlines or stuff in the paper but you've got to take it with a pinch of salt really, um, it means you're doing your job well or yeah you're doing something well and they like it so I guess you've got to keep doing what you're doing and take each day as it comes. Uh, I want to learn a little bit about your early days at Exeter. I understand you encountered a little bit of rejection quite early on. So, I mean, failing a trial at the age of nine, this must have been quite disappointing. How can you describe how you and your family handled this and how it affected you? To be honest, I, um, I dealt with it quite well, I thought. I went away for a couple of years and played my football with my club team and then uh, come back a few years later and... Um, that's when I signed for Exeter. Do you feel as though the early setback was possibly a great lesson in terms of figuring out just how tough it is to make a career out of pro football? Yeah, it's always tough. When you're growing up, everyone wants to be a, a professional footballer. That's how it is. You know, everyone's watching football on the TV and so many boys are competing for a similar spot and not many make it. So, um, you know, I'm grateful that I'm, I'm here and it's, it's um, a credit to Exeter, really, for helping me uh, get to this point, and Brentford, obviously. Another interesting part of your CV was your season in non-league football with Western Supermare. How valuable was that in terms of your development? That was massive for my development. Uh, it was my first stint in non-league football at Western Supermare. I really enjoyed it with the lads. You know, they'd previously just been playing reserve football, and if you win or lose, it, it doesn't really matter because you're not in a league or anything like that. So it was a big test for me and I really enjoyed it because um, I felt like I was out of my comfort zone and that's what I needed to help spur me on. Um, I had a great manager, Ryan Northmore, who supported me and good times or bad times, he, he helped me through it and it was massive for my development, like I said. Do you think the modern game demands more from creative players like yourself? in terms of not just scoring and creating goals, but needed to add a defence element to your game? Yeah, I feel like the game's changing each year. There's a lot more, um, there's a lot more sports science brought into it. Um, players are becoming more athletic um, in that demand. So especially in the Premier League and the, and the top level, there's a lot of athletes and powerful players. So I feel like there's a, a bit of both you have to you have to be creative and, and sharp up top in your brain, but also um, you've got to have the physical element to help you in things like you said, like the defensive sort of play. Outside of the game, what do you like doing? Do you have a passion for anything else? What do you use as your distraction away from football? I'm currently taking up golf, just a little um, 
just a little hobby. We'll see how long that lasts because um, I'm quite an indecisive person. So um, hopefully I stick um, stick with this one and yeah. So returning back to your current club at Brentford, you've punched above your weight in recent seasons. I suppose that's not gone unnoticed when clubs come hunting for your best players and managers. For example, Dean Smith at Villa. Yeah, like I said earlier about interest and stuff like that, it's going to happen. Um, Dean Smith, when he come in for me, um, you know, he he supported me a lot and I uh, had a really good relationship with him when he was here. Um, I'm delighted for him and Aston Villa getting promoted and um, yeah, all the best to them really. So how big a wrench was it leaving the club you've been at since the age of 11? It was definitely a hard decision to, to leave Exeter but one that in the end I felt was easy to make the transition because I wanted to test myself at a higher level and you couldn't turn down this opportunity to play in the championship so it was hard to leave my friends but um, yeah I'm, I'm glad I've done it. You made the move to Championship Brentford so what would you say were the challenges in adapting to both London life and a higher level of football? Firstly moving to London living on your own um, makes you grow up a lot more, you're out of your comfort zone, um, you have to do things for yourself and it just makes you open your eyes a, a little bit more to be honest um, and with the football that you, you know there's some big teams in the league, uh, a lot more fans and no game is easy in the championship, anyone can beat anyone so it's definitely um, a big step up from League 2 um, but one that um, I'm enjoying people liken your style to the play of Thierry Henry, would you say he was an inspiration growing up or someone you look to model your game on? I like to model my game on him, yeah, but um, I wouldn't compare myself to Thierry Henry, that's a, that's a big shout I think. Um, he's definitely an idol of mine, but um, I wouldn't compare myself to him because, um, yeah, he's a, another league. It was great talking to Ollie Watkins. He's a player I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about over the coming years. Well, now back to the studio with Ty and Lexi. OK, a huge thank you to all our guests today. We'll leave you with more evidence of the exceptional talent that is Ollie Watkins. Remember the name. Bye for now and see you soon. Not too many clear-cut opportunities in this second half for Brentford. Barbie, good ball through to Watkins. Watkins to Morpai, back to Watkins again. Great job! Oh, oh yes. what a goal that is! Ollie Watkins beats Ballon in the corner of the net. Dances over towards the Brentford fans behind that goal. And what a celebration's going on there. The 66th minute brings Brentford's equaliser. And what a cracking strike that is from Ollie Watkins on the edge of the box. Wowza, that was a howitzer from Holly Watkins. That was some great interplay. Into Neil Morpai and back out it came. And Ollie Watkins right on the edge of the penalty area. It was an instant hit as a Stoke defender came.